looking crazy like a motherfucker right now, but you know what? I don't give a damn. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. This is J Damage. I'm back again with another video. I miss around and fell asleep at like two. Didn't wake up till like eight o'clock. This joint is crazy. I can't even believe I slept that long, man. I'm like, what is wrong with me? But you know, being a graphic designer, it'd be so much going on. But today we're gonna be watching two horror story videos, horror story animation videos from YNC Entertainment. I haven't seen anything else going on online outside of Will Smith smacking the shit out of uh, Chris Rock, but we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this. And um, y'all go ahead and uh, hit like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing popping and uh, let's get started. This is an unsettling story that I do not usually bring up in normal conversation, yet it's still always on my mind. It happened to me a few years ago, but I will never be able to forget this strange experience that happened in my own home. When I was a child, I was always afraid of the bathroom in my basement. Every time I walked in, I would always think that someone was hiding behind the shower curtain. I would say, I see you, just in case someone was there and they would be alerted. Hmm. No one was there, it was all just a fear in my head. As I got older, it became a frequent- That is literally the worst thing you can say if somebody is actually hiding right there, is I see you. You should say, be saying like, hey, hey, who is that? Or something. What do you mean, I see you? A habit of mine to always say, I see you as I walked into a room by myself. If I went to take a shower, I would say, I see you, come home from work, I see you. It was all just to prepare for the slim chance that someone would be there and think that I saw them. One weekend when I was 18 years old, my parents were out of town attending a close friend's wedding. He said when he was 18 years old, so he'd been doing this his whole damn life. <laughs> my dad was the best man. I had the whole house to myself and it seemed like the perfect getaway from their strict rules and occasional arguing. I didn't have friends to invite over, so I was always just alone, by myself. On the first night, things were upright. I binged my favorite horror movies, ordered food from my favorite Chinese restaurant, and just did classic teenage things that I enjoyed. I woke up the next morning for work, which at the time I was a delivery boy for a pizza place near me called the Bergen Beach Cafe. I did a lot of deliveries that night, and I remember making over a hundred dollars in tips which at the time was huge for me. Around 8 p.m. my shift ended and I arrived home. When I pulled into my driveway, I saw an unfamiliar car parked on the sidewalk close to my house. At first glance, I thought it was my neighbor's car, but there would be no reason for them to park in front of my house since they have a driveway of their own. Though it was strange, I brushed it off and I walked in my house. I changed out of my work clothes and showered up into fresh pajamas. I see you, I said, as I regularly do when I walk out of the bathroom. This boy literally spent his whole life saying that. Walking into rooms saying, I see you. I feel like he kind of, you know, I feel like life is all about energy. And, it, and when you constantly keep conjur uh, conjuring, when you keep conjuring up stuff, uh, you know, it's like you will make something. You Your thoughts will become things. And I feel like he made this real. Something was sitting on edge with me. And the nervousness from seeing the strange car outside my house was clouding my judgment. Being alone for another full day with my only family members out of town was making me feel very apprehensive. But I continued on with my night. I walked downstairs and went into my kitchen to heat up my food. I get sick of eating pizza a lot of the time since I'm around it all day. Hold on, somebody at my door. I'm gonna have to be like this dude on some, I see you. You know, I had to go get my gun, so <laughs> I ain't gonna be saying, I see you. It's gonna be the strap. <laughs> the strap gonna tell you, I see you, pow. <laughs> all right, let's continue with the video. So on my way home, I picked up some macaroni and cheese from the deli. 
Three minutes in the microwave left me time to wait around and ponder my thoughts. I left the kitchen and walked into my living room to see what was on the television. I was a bit of a nerd and was always looking for cartoons to watch. I see you, I said. Slowly, my heart started to drop below my waist. The moment I'd been preparing myself for my whole life had come. Something I will never forget and still haunts me. Just like I said, he's been doing this for so long, it's almost like he created he created this moment. And I, and I always tell people, your thoughts become things. Stop doing that, man. Like, wow. It's me to this day. From the corner of my eyes, I saw a tall, thick figure hiding behind the curtain. It started to move slightly. I was speechless. Goosebumps ran through every inch of my skin, and my brain couldn't process fast enough what to do. I swallowed deep, thinking quickly what my next move should be. The curtain moved again. I was frozen. Slowly, the curtain began to open, and a man dressed in all black was standing there. He had his head tilted to the right, staring at me with intent to murder. Pop, 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 pop. Gunshot murder. He had a Chelsea smile, a fresh cut with blood still dripping down, dirty skin, and his smile was wide with eyes full of rage. I see you too he said in a deep, raspy voice. He then pulled out a large knife from his back pocket and pointed it at me. I started to run. Gunshot he immediately up. followed. I sped out. I would have been, what? Oh, you see this? Pack it, pack it, pack it, pack it, pack it. Can you see now, nigga? <laughs> the door with a 10-foot lead. <laughs> there was no time to close the door behind me as it would only hold me back. When I ran outside, it was pouring rain and pitch black with only the street lights providing light. Luckily, my neighbor a few houses down across the street was a police officer, so my first instinct was to run there. I slammed on the door, knocking hard until my knuckles started to bleed. I looked back and there he was. He stopped chasing me, but he was right there in the middle of the street, staring at me the same smile and same crazy eyes. Suddenly the door opened and I rushed inside and closed the door shut with no explanation to my neighbor. I looked outside the window from his house, but I could not see any trace of the man. Mm. To this day, he could still be out there somewhere, lurking around. Every time I think of this story, I wonder what could have happened if I never said, I see you whenever I walked into a room. So he basically looking at the, see, he basically looking at the situation as saying, I see you actually helped him. When I feel like I see you ain't do shit but put you in danger. Shit, what you need to do is if you're going to be running around here talking about some I see you, at least have you a gun just in case you do see something. But, uh, that was that of that video. We're going to go ahead and watch one more. The very um, last video is called True Jeepney Horror Story Animated. We're going to go ahead and jump into that. I don't see that shit got me looking around. We're going to go ahead and jump right up into this. And we're going to go ahead and uh, call it a night after we do this. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Hi, my pseudo name is Jade. I just wanted to share my experience that transpired five years ago. I was a busy college student back then. It was around 8 p.m. when I finished my classes. Shortly after our last subject ended, I am excited to go home to relax. When I find it hard to catch a ride, I decided to go to the jeepney terminal, which is a couple of meters away from our university, in order to secure a seat in the jeepney. Even though I was a bit exhausted from my school works, I still managed to keep myself together and continued walking. It was just an ordinary busy evening, and as I am walking my way to the terminal, I always put my earphones on to listen to some music. As I approached the terminal, I heard the jeepney barker, a person who calls for passengers, said, Oh, hulin biahina, hulin biahinata. 
means that jeepney will be the last ride for tonight. I just laughed at the barker and told him that this would not be the last ride. Okay, I'm confused. Maybe this is something from a different country because I'm not familiar with what a jeepney is. Like, is that like a form of transportation out there or something? But well, let's continue. But it will be the last one only for this day. Then I immediately climbed up to the jeepney. When the jeepney was already full with passengers, it then started to travel. While riding the jeepney, I am fond of looking outside while listening to music. I noticed that the view started to change. Instead of seeing city lights and buildings, it turned into a field, like we're on a rural place. The place was dark, and only the jeepney's light inside was the source of light on the road. I was confused for a moment because I thought I rode the wrong jeepney. But after I read the signage hanging inside the jeepney, I am indeed sure taking the right one. Maybe the driver took a wrong turn, or is this a kind of a shortcut? I said to myself. So I asked the driver if where he is taking us. Excuse me, Manong, where are we? The driver did not answer and just continued to drive. When I looked at my fellow passengers, I was shocked. They were all wearing white with some blood stains, and their head were all missing. I could not believe my eyes. Then, out of the blue, the driver spoke. We're not lost, miss. We are taking the right way. I was really terrified. It, it, this don't sound like it's real. It sounds like she might be dreaming or in some type of weird nightmare or something, because you telling me at no point in time you never look back at those people and they fucking heads is gone? The fuck? All right, continue. ...and shocked. The things can't sink in through my mind. Chills ran down through my spine. I was coldly sweating and my face turned pale. I wanted to jump out of the jeepney, but I can't move a muscle. Suddenly, I heard someone's voice out of nowhere. You do not belong here. Go, just jump. Why are you here? You are not allowed in here. It snapped the creep out of me. Then I jumped out on the jeepney. I got scrapes on my arms and bruises on my legs as I fell on the succeeding jeepney. But I'm glad I managed to get out of it. As I stared at the jeepney that continued its journey, it suddenly crashed. The jeepney was badly damaged and blowed up. I was screaming as hard as I can for help. But then I woke up. It was just a dream. Hit like or give me a comment and give me my props i told y'all she was dreaming like what like you didn't notice this continue the passengers were shocked and looked at me like i was some kind of a lunatic the moment i woke up a lady asked me if i was okay because i was sweating so much and my face turned pale i started to panic and crying desperately asking the driver to stop the jeepney even if i'm still far away from home the other passengers trying to make me calm. After causing a commotion, I immediately got out of the jeepney. As the jeepney drove off, suddenly, it was hit by a big truck. Just a few seconds, the jeepney blowed up and starting to burn. I heard loud screaming coming from the jeepney. Final destination? Asking for help. I could not believe my eyes for what had just happened. Then suddenly, I remembered my dream. To this day, I still cannot believe that moment. Then I realized what the Barker said right before the incident. He said it was the last ride. Even though I am thankful that I'm still alive today, still, there is some guilt inside me, for I did not manage to save them. Dope. Uh, even though that sounds a little bit too familiar, that's just like the, um the final destination story because if you ever seen um the final destination movie a long time ago in the final destination movie there was a guy sitting on a plane and then he well basically he had a dream that he was on a plane when he was on a plane he started noticing stuff about the plane and then next thing you know the plane you know ended up uh exploding in the air or crashing whatever and uh basically this is she literally just experienced the exact same thing so that was a cool story, you know, for what it is. I don't know what the hell a jeepney is, but I'm guessing that's like a bus or some shit. But, um, yo, uh, I appreciate y'all for checking out this video. Um, you know, if you enjoyed what you just watched, go ahead and hit like. You know, go ahead and do a comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. 
And uh, let me know your thoughts on these videos. I mean, did you like these stories? Do you feel like these stories was um, was dope or not? Me personally, I really like Juan C Entertainment's channel. I just love these animations and these stories. I wish I would have discovered stuff like this when I was a kid. I would have been watching this type of shit. But uh, yeah, I appreciate y'all for checking this video and I will see y'all in the next video. We're gonna keep this train rolling and uh, find some more cool content to watch. So I appreciate y'all, I'm out of here, peace.